All right, we will shift gears now and bring in our Yahoo Finance's Jen Schonberger. Stablecoin issuer Circle launched an ad campaign promoting stablecoins over a central bank digital currency. That is China's CBDC is on full display at the Beijing Winter Olympics. It also comes after a White House meeting this week tied to stablecoin regulation. And Jen, you spoke with Circle CEO Jeremy Allaire about all of this, correct? Hey, good afternoon, Karina. That's right. Uh, stablecoin issuer Circle out with a brand new ad campaign saying, quote, central bank digital currencies carry the specter of privacy erosion, making cyber threats and technology upgrades a taxpayer burden rather than the motive of free market drive and well-regulated competition. At the same time this week, Treasury Undersecretary Nellie Lang testified before the House Financial Services Committee, saying that a central bank digital currency could determine how stable coins coexist and said that depending on how the Fed designs one, assuming they proceed with one, it could actually supplant stable coins. I put that question in an exclusive interview to Circle CEO Jeremy Allaire. I asked him whether a CBDC poses a threat to private stable coins. We also talked about the digital currency space race. Take a listen. I was very appreciative of, of Undersecretary Liang's testimony. Uh, I think she is doing an excellent job of thinking through for the U.S. federal government and obviously shepherding a lot of other uh, parties um, are, around this, what's the right approach to supervising and establishing a framework to regulate firms like Circle. And, um, and I think we have uh, obviously come forward uh, and, and are in the process of, of looking to become a national digital currency bank. And we believe, of course, that dollar digital currencies that are operating at internet scale that 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 work um you know to improve both not just payments but overall kind of financial and economic system improvements it's a huge opportunity for the united states and i think um what's interesting to see is is we're starting to see policymakers including the undersecretary emphasize that this is here to stay this is growing um and uh and, and i think there's an acknowledgement that there's a here and there, uh, there's a here and now, uh, and that's that's very apparent to a lot of people. And then there's some theoretical things, like theoretically there might be, you know, a, a government project in the future. And I think uh, across the board, I think increasingly people, including in her testimony, in, in uh, the undersecretary's testimony, is, is very clear that these uh, innovations are going to coexist. You mentioned earlier uh, in the interview that you have applied for a bank charter. Uh, and during the hearing this week, in fact, uh, Treasury Undersecretary Lang was asked whether the OCC should approve a bank charter for Circle. Curious how that application process is going now and what you're hearing from regulators. And has the FDIC given you any assurance that you would receive deposit insurance and become FDIC insured? So what I can share is that we are in a process um, and it's a, it is going to take a, a, it's a long process. And I think, um, you know, we, we actually have not formally submitted our application at this point in time, uh, but it is something we're in the pre-application phase and there's a What's lot. What's holding of you back, Jeremy? Uh, we've got a lot going on, um, <laughs> which is one, you know, one, one just general, the physics of, of, uh, of everything that we're doing. I think, um, I, I think the second is um, is I, I think the the government, the federal government, um, I think is coming up to speed on stable coins, blockchains, digital assets, the sprint as as uh, as I know you were referring to uh, before. Um, and I, I think are just trying to understand, okay, where's this going to fit in terms of the kind of charters that might apply? And there's open questions, and this was also in, I believe, some of the undersecretary's testimony about, you know, this isn't necessarily about FDIC insurance for a fractional reserve bank, but is it possible that there is some insured, uh, you know, insurance framework that's more specific to the risks of the reserves and liquidity of a stablecoin? So there's things to work out, um, and, and that will take time, and it'll be, I hope, uh, collaborative uh, as, as you know, I think that both the, the U.S. government and private sector try and figure out how to do this right.
The Olympics are underway now in Beijing. And of course, China is testing its digital yuan, its digital wallet. At the same time, as we've been talking about, the U.S. Federal Reserve is looking at the pros and cons of issuing a central bank digital currency. Where do you see the U.S. right now in the digital currency space race and how do private stable coins fit in there? I mean, our, our view is, 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 uh, is firm, which is that the U.S. is winning the digital currency space race. Uh, today, the preeminent uh, digital currency on the internet is the dollar. Uh, just looking at USDC alone, there are you know uh, hundreds of different digital wallets that support this in hundreds of countries around the world. Uh, exchanges all around the world support convertibility of this. Uh, it supported two point four trillion dollars in transactions on the internet last year, and and is really growing. And there there are robust and growing ecosystems around it, and so. You know, I think if you look at a vision for what we want, which is open, accessible, interoperable, a standard and technology that is that that people can innovate on top of without permission, um, that's the kind of dollar I think we want to win in this space race and on the internet, as opposed to something that is tightly controlled, government administered, uh, and the like, which is what China initiatives really represent. And so, I think the U.S. is winning. I think the question is. Can the U.S. really get some energy behind this and ensure that this kind of you know, market competitive open model, which has been, I think, how the West has approached the Internet over the past multiple decades, can they approach that in the convergence of the Internet and the financial system? That was a great interview, Jennifer. All right, Jennifer Schonberger, thank you so much for that informative interview. We will leave that there.